This is our first episode of uh, Opus Community. And today what we're gonna go over are the new features inside of Travel Joy that they just released just a couple of weeks ago. We're gonna go over the features, why they're important and how you can use them inside of your travel business. So with that, let's get started. these features. All right, so there's four really great new features that Travel Joy has released. And so let me open up my Travel Joy account so that I can have those available to show you. The first feature is that Travel Joy is really hot and heavy trying to compete with, uh, I believe, Travify in terms of itinerary building. So they released a couple of, I don't know, months ago, maybe even a year or so ago, uh, their smart proposal feature. And now what they have is the ability for you to actually save proposal items in your library. And so if you have an item in your library, like you're building out a smart proposal and you build out an item, you can save it to your library and reuse it. So this is really good. And I think, I think what we'll probably be, what we'll see from this is we'll see in the future, we'll see some additional uh, items like sharing uh, across accounts so that you can share proposal items just like Travelfly. So let's see what this actually looks like. I was playing around with this a little bit um, earlier and I do think it's kind of slick. So what I have here is our sample and I think I have a sample proposal here. And so I'm gonna open up a proposal right here. So here's my sample proposal that I have. And what you, where you see the feature is you actually see it in this library feature right here. And so let's say you wanna create a proposal item, you create your smart proposal. And let's, let's, I guess if you don't have any context and you don't even really know, Travel Joy has two features um, relative to presentation that you can do. The first is you can just do a basic proposal. It's not as sexy, doesn't look as good as their smart proposal. Smart proposal is certainly something at the presentation. So once you've done the research and you're ready to put together a proposal, you want it to look graphically pleasing, you know, you can create a smart proposal. And then if you've got group funds turned on, you can also have your clients pay from uh, pay from the proposal, which is really pretty slick, but you do have to have the group funds on. So what they now have allowed you to do is create an, a library for your items and it's really slick. So this is just a, um, a proposal that I've already built. And so I'm just gonna show you what the proposal looks like. So this is, you know, it's got a nice graphic that you can build on the item. I've got the section and I've built out one day. I've got a description, it comes from me. And as the person scrolls down, they can see, you know, a really nice looking, sexy proposal. And so let's see how you actually use the new feature, which is to actually save a proposal item. I'm going to just create, I'm going to add a new one just for the sake of this. I'm going to do a sample, sample day. And then you can put your text here. I think I have some sample text. I was uh, building this. I'm just going to copy text from a Word document that I have. I'm just going to put this day three here. And you can format your proposal items. You can highlight them, bold them, you know, add bullets. You can add hyperlinks and all of that fun stuff. You can add um, photos to your proposal items. So let's say if I add a, um, I'm just going to add an image here. is not a relevant image, but you can add the image. You can add up to three images um, here. You can also add documents as well. You can add those documents to the proposal as well. And so all that you do is you see that the sample date shows up here in the proposal section. Now at the top of this, what you can do is you can add the item to your library. And then when you click on library, it shows up and then you can use it in future proposals that you create. So that's really a really handy new feature for Travel Joy. And so you can start to build your library up, which is really good too. 
You can also search, this was already a item, you could search past full proposals and then copy the whole proposal, but this is actually allowing you to uh, save and you reuse specific line items. So for example, a good example of an item, uh, an item on a proposal that you may uh, want to create is travel insurance. The fact that you offer it, maybe you have vendors that you use and you recommend, you can always add that to the bottom of your proposal and let people know kind of what that standard item is. So if you've got standard items that you include in every proposal, creating yourself library items would be a great use case for this new feature. So I really give this feature a thumbs up if you're using the smart proposal uh, functionality. Definitely love this new feature. So I'm going to be looking for them to have the ability for us to share the proposal items outside of my account to other travel advisors. That would be a really good add on. So I suspect that that's coming. All right. So the next feature that's available is this price multiple day group packages. This is a little bit of a complicated one if you're not doing group pages, but if you are, what I really want to like kind of impress upon you is really the value add that this feature set will um, create for you. So let's say, for example, we're going to go to Travel uh, Joy, and I've got a sample group that's here, this test group. And let's say I'm going to sell, I'm going to create several versions. I actually have a client and she's going to go to Dubai three times in 2023. She's going, she's going with us on the fam trip. She's got her own group that's going in April. And then she's going again at the end of the year. So instead of creating three separate groups with three separate pricings, you could create signature groups right with signature itineraries that you have and then create multiple days inside of that and that's what i want to show you so i've got this dubai group we're going to view that group and then we're going to go to the group page so you don't have to build the page once you don't have to copy it you just build the page once and then you're going to add multiple days and now you can also assign multiple prices to those days so that's a really awesome feature that this will allow you to do so I've got this group page that's already built. And if you, you can see what it looks like in the preview. So this page has got a video, it's got some text, it's got some graphics, it's got the itinerary built, and it's got this. Now, what I would do differently if I'm gonna offer multiple days is I wouldn't have this specific uh, day here because I'm gonna have multiple day options. So I would just say day one, day two, day three, I would take that off and just have the name of the day and what would be included in each of the itinerary days. So what you can do now with this new feature is in edit mode, you can go to pricing. And what you can do is this functionality was already here. You could add additional days, but you can now add pricing two per day as opposed to saying okay it's just a flat fee right you can say so if, let's say you have a four night a six night and a seven night you can add a per price per night um per uh so if somebody picks the four nights it'll automatically calculate how much the trip will be for four nights versus six nights versus seven nights right so you don't have to build separate packages for each of the variety of nights that you're offering your stays for so all you can do all you need to do here is if you already have a package that's built you can just edit edit the package and then at the bottom when you're doing your pricing you would then set your price per night or per person all night. So this is a really cool feature. So if you're set, selling a signature itinerary and you want to let your clients be able to pick from, you know, five to seven days, 14 days, or however many days that you want to sell, you can sell it on a per day basis. They could pick it, then you can go to your tour operator, then you could then reserve the amount of days that they're going to get. So I really like this feature too. So you can set the price per person, set how much it's going to be. So let's say it's 320, um, maybe it's 520. You know, I'm just making these numbers up. You're gonna wanna actually make sure that you actually price. So let's say it's 320 per person here. That's the deposit. 
final due date is you know October here. Click save, and then when you preview the page, what's going to happen is when the client goes and they select. Uh, when they select the amount of days that they want to go on, which is prime. Actually, let me publish this and then I'm going to actually show you what it looks like live because this is kind of showing me some swirly stuff. So I want to show you what it looks like on a live page. So when you actually see the live page, what happens is you scroll down, person clicks on book now. Notice it says the starting price is $12.80. Then you can select the number of travelers. The traveler then can select the number of, select the day. So let's say it's gonna be the 23rd through the 27th, that it's gonna automatically calculate what the price is because it's doing it on a per day basis. But let's say, and then I've also stipulated um, the duration of those trips inside of that group. So if you're selling the same, itinerary over and over again, you can create one group page and then get people to add them as individual trips to that with different dates. So that really can cut over your overhead and then you can keep track of all your metrics. You can see like, okay, I sold Dubai, I sold Paris, I sold, you know, Mexico. Maybe you're using the same, um, you're selling the same uh, cruise itinerary, you're selling the same trip itinerary, this is a really good use case. And this feature is a really good value add to that use case. If you are going to sell it for multiple uh, multiple days in a particular area, maybe you leave it open-ended and they can pick their days as long as it's you know far enough out. But being able to price, price it at the group level per trip inside of a group is a really good value add for you. All right, that's uh, feature number two. And then this other feature, which is auto pay on direct invoices. This is really slick because the feature already exists on groups, but what you are now able to do is you're able to uh, have it for your individual invoices. So let me show you what it looks like on a group invoice. When you set up a group invoice, what happens is when you're setting up the pricing, you have the option of uh, when you're actually setting up, actually it's right here in this, um, when you're setting up the pricing for, it's actually, now oh, here it is, it's on the group. So when you set up the pricing for a group page, this option that allows your client to auto pay is here. Um, where is it? <laughs> There it is. Offer client option to auto pay. Up until this feature was released at the individual invoice, you could only uh, allow your clients to do auto pay for group invoices. Now, with this new feature, it will allow you to have the same functionality at individual invoices. And so why is this important to you is, is because it allows flexibility. So you don't have to audit, you don't have to send or schedule out payments for your clients when they select this autumn this this option what happens is the payment automatically processes without you involved so as long as you're on a direct pay or group funds the payment will process if they've selected this so when they're filling out the invoice they're putting in their credit card information and let's say it's four five six payments on the day that they sign up every month on that day it will automatically process their payment. So this at the group feature was great, but now to also have this at the individual invoice level is also equally as great as well. In this document, what I've done is I've given you um, just some Travel Joy reference information on what auto pay is and FAQ that you can go there and check it out. But I really like this feature. I definitely like it at the group level. And then for them to have extended it to the individual invoice level, that's pretty slick as well. So this is a really good feature. Definitely not anything that you need to do except for just allow or check the feature on your invoices. So let's actually create it because I've not tested it on an individual invoice. So let's go back to my um, sample and let's test it out. So let's go to my sample. Let's go here. 
And then I'm going to create a new invoice direct. And um, I'm going to add some, I'm just going to add a package just for testing purposes. Let's say 2500 here, and then I'm just going to say, uh, let's say 0, 15, or 1, 2, 3, let's say let's do 3, okay. 3, click save, and then what should happen is allow customer, uh, no, you can't do customer payments on this group funds, but allow um, here. Um, why not? Uh, so I have to add the schedule first. So that's the difference. So let me add multiple payments. Let's just do that monthly. Do every month, create schedule. Let's end that on 2023. And this may not be enough time to do schedule, but it looks like there's one. So final payments. Um, I don't think I've set it up for enough time. So let me delete that and then add another multiple payment. Let's do on let's do let's do that here and then let's make the payment due on it won't let me do that because the date is oh, I did. All right, so there's two payments. Now it should be able to do an auto pay. So now you see, notice it says invoice is auto pay ready. So I select that. I don't know, this one may, be ha this one may have trip funds turned on already. Um, I don't remember if this particular test account does. I may have this as, uh, um so here so it looks like it's tied to trip funds so you have to have trip can't be turned off so you have to tie i guess to make this work it has to be trip fundable um which all that really means is is that your payments are going into a group fund as opposed to directly into your account I've done a whole training on the, the difference between that. I did a training on like five money considerations for uh, that you need to do when using Travel Joy. So I go over what group funds are. I'm not going to turn it on here because this is my test uh, trip and I don't want to do that. But the feature is available. Just looks like it needs to be for group fund uh, for trips that are having the group funds available to me really is half a dozen six in the other in terms of should you use it or not it really just depends on how you manage the money in your business if you're using group funds and you're using that feature i think having this piece on is just the cat's meow because again i don't have to worry about processing payments um the reminders will automatically send out so for this particular one a reminder will go out on this first of each month and then it'll also process the payment also on the first as well so that's, uh, that's really what that feature is about. And then the very last feature is really, I, I envision that Travel Joy is going to be allowing us to do more with supplier contacts um, in the future. And so what this is, is that you, if you already have a database, let's say you have a list of the suppliers that you work with, we actually have a spreadsheet with all of our supplier contact information in you can now import that spreadsheet of data into Travel Joy, and then that will allow you to do all of your emailing through Travel Joy, keep the record of what you're doing inside of one location. So this is a really good step in the right direction for centralization of communication inside of Travel Joy. So let me just show you how that works, is um, if you go to contacts, and then you go to suppliers, you can add contacts and then you can do a contact import. And then the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the, the spreadsheet because you do need to get the data in a certain format so that it can upload properly. So I'm just I've downloaded this as an example so you can see it. 
And so it actually went over to my other screen. And so now it's, it's an example um, here. And all it needs is if you expand these fields, you just need to have first name, last name, email, phone number, website, supplier, and any notes. So as long as you get the file in this location, you'll then be able to save the file and then use it as an upload. Um, we absolutely, inside of uh, the Travel Request Blueprint training um, and the Travel Joy Accelerator program, I talk about how you can send an email during step three of the process when you're researching and you want to get a request for quote, you can send an email inside of Travel Joy. And let me show you how that actually, what that looks like, because we actually have a template um, that you can use. So let's say I want to, I'm in this, I'm in my dashboard and I want to deal with this test. I'm going to use this test group, go to the view group. And let's say I want to send a message to my supplier um, here. I want to send a message to new message, but I want to send it to um, here. I think I have a supplier. Send supplier email. And so this template that we have called our supplier template, um, it all you have to do is fill out the requirements for it, and then you can send it to your supplier. And so that's really slick here. I want to send this individually. Ooh. Actually, don't want to do that. I think I actually need to go to the supplier, but I do have a template that you can just use to send off your um, requirements. So the reason why I really like this feature is because I'll be able to, I don't have to manually add, because right now that's what I was doing. I was manually adding suppliers as I use them. Now I can add all of my suppliers in the database in Travel Joy. And then whenever I want to send them an email, I can just use my template. I can send them an email. I've got standard email, particularly when it comes to requests for travel quotes from my suppliers. If I'm not dealing with the direct site, I will send them an email and I am in Gmail trying to do that. And now I can do it all in one place. All of my emails will go out to all of my suppliers for a particular trip. Their response hopefully will come back in as well. And I'll be able to really manage that in one place. So that's a really good value add feature there. And that's pretty much it in terms of what is new and what they uh, released to us. This, uh, this I, I don't know if they're going to be doing quarterly releases. I kind of looked back in the archives and I didn't see a whole lot of releases uh, that they've done. So this is, a, I guess, in a Travel Joy's world, a pretty rather large release. So four great features. Um, I will be coming to you guys again uh, this month with another tip or something else value add for you to add to your bag of tricks. But these four features, definitely that smart proposal is my number one favorite. And then also being able to do pricing at the group level is also my number two favorite out of the four features that they've added. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to uh, just put, post a, a discussion thread here and I'll answer it. If you have any questions about the usage of these features, just let me know.